the, the string thought is, uh, in string theory, there are these six other dimensions that didn't unfold, that didn't expand at the Big Bang. Uh, a, B, C uh, coordinates. Uh, ah, sorry, X, the, you know, the X, Y, Z, the expanded dimensions. And there are these six other dimensions in most of the string theories that didn't expand. And the string theorists see them as, as curled up. The extra dimensions are curled up and didn't uncurl. But it seemed to me that if they're curled up, if they're curled up in X, Y, Z, there are special cases of X, Y, Z. Um, yeah, height isn't in, well, it passes through. It passes through the, pl the plane, but it isn't in the plane. Uh, likewise, you know, Y, Y isn't, uh, isn't in the x-axis, it passes through the x-axis. And the A, B, C, D, E, F, those six other dimensions, they pass through, but they're not in these dimensions, they're other dimensions. There's a, another physicist, uh, the man who reconciled the, the uh, light forces, the light nuclear force. Oh, he did something to get him a Nobel Prize, Abdul Salam. He speaks about inward dimensions when he talks about string theory and, and it comes very naturally to this layman that these six other dimensions are, are inward but we can just say other but but where are these other dimensions well the standard physicists physicists and the standard model they say uh, that the universe is expanding in every direction it's ex the expanding universe it's expanding from here and here is where everything is expanding away from. Here is the spot where the Big Bang took place. It took place at every here, and then everything else expands away from here. Now, the, these three expanded dimensions, they're not, in a sense, they're not inside the universe. The universe, they encompass the universe. The universe is inside of them, is defined by them. Likewise, the, the six inward dimensions, other dimensions, they're not inside the universe. They encompass the universe. And where are they? They're here. They're here everywhere. And I don't know if this is just wordplay, and I'll need, I need someone who understands these things to tell me what the simple fallacy, the simple thing I'm missing, I'll speak more about that in a moment, is. But it seems to me that it's a very beautiful thought that these six, in, inwardly, these six infinitesimally, almost infinitesimally small dimensions are overlapping. And they're also, I read, they're also, as well as being almost infinitesimally small, because there's a reciprocal function, they're almost infinitely large. Certainly, there's almost an infinite amount of information in this inward microscopic cosmic moat. And that might explain these phenomena that are turning up more and more in hard science about non-local causality and entanglement that we read about, the entanglement of particles. So that you change the spin on one, it changes the spin on, on another. Because inwardly, all things are overlapping in this cosmic mode, in these six other dimensions. So that's, that's Baba Norm's string thought. And um, it's probably missing something. What, it, para, what, what it's missing might be what our lay thought, the lay thoughts, uh, the non-physicist thought about the tides, told that the moon pulls water, the moon's pulling on the oceans. And I was walking around for a, f a few years back thinking, if the moon's pulling, if the moon's pulling on the oceans, then there'd be one tide facing the moon. There'd be one elevation each 24 hours, each time the, the Earth spins around. But the tide are, are, is on both sides, and it's not actually the pull of the moon. It's the forces inter, interplay with the moon, where we have the centripetal force focused on the moon. 
So these are diverging lines of force, balanced by centrifugal forces as, as the Earth and Moon spin around each other, spin around a common axis, which is about 100 miles down into the Earth, that common, common axis. And as the Earth spins around, the centrifugal force is parallel to the centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is parallel, centripetal force is focused, and the differential between them creates the tides. So that's why there are two tides, not one tide. And hard for the lay mind to grasp this. Likewise, Bob and Norm's thought about the string theory that the other dimensions are all here, all overlapping in this cosmic moat, where it's the resonance that differentiates things. Maybe a similar foolishness to to the moon pulling the, the waters rather than the differential.